Oh, they're loving this. What a Friendly. shot that was. Over the past year or so, I've been trying my best to recreate and play some of the best shots we've ever seen in professional snooker. Despite being nowhere near as good as the top professionals playing these shots, I can usually get somewhere near them even if it does take me several attempts. But unfortunately there is just one player with so much cue power that allows him to play shots I can't get anywhere near. So that got me wondering, what exactly is it about Neil Robertson's technique that allows him to play crazy shots like this? So I'm going to try to explain how Neil Robertson's technique works so you understand what you need to do to play these types of shot. Neil is a great break builder but he doesn't just have a solid technique that works consistently, he seems to be able to get more spin on the cue ball than almost anybody else. We're going to look at his technique in detail to see why. And we're going to start with his stance. The only thing is, Neil's left-handed and I'm right-handed, so to solve any problems this may create, I'm going to refer to this side of my body as my cue arm and my cue leg, and this side of my body as my bridge arm and my bridge leg. It might seem a bit silly at times, but at least we'll be clear on what I'm talking about. Neil wouldn't be able to play his most extreme shots without an adequate stance, but when you really look at it, it's nothing too out of the ordinary. He stands with his cue foot directly in line with the shot underneath his cue, so his leg is vertical to the floor. His bridge foot then goes slightly in front and is bent quite a lot, but that's mainly because he's quite tall. This allows him to get in a balanced position to be able to play the shot. Both of his feet point away from his body, but not uncomfortably so, and this begins to create a rock-solid position for him. Neil puts a lot of weight forward onto his bridge foot, but that's the only part of his stance that helps with his cue action. Most of this is just about creating a balanced platform that makes it difficult for him to move, no matter what the rest of his body does. All this weight going forward then helps to keep his bridge arm in position. From this position, it's very difficult for me to move this, and this just keeps him even more steady. And all of this weight going forward helps his cueing because as he plays the shot he's actually got more room for his cue arm to go through than normal. Having his body in this position means his cue hand can come through slightly further before it makes contact with his body. There it stopped there, normally it'd have to stop about here and that just little tiny bit means you can get a lot more of a reaction out of the cue ball. He's able to follow through that little bit more because he leans into the table so much. Considering the shots he's able to play, you'd expect him to have quite a long bridge, the distance between the cue ball and his hand. But in reality, he actually keeps his hand about the same distance to the cue ball as a majority of professional players, just over a foot. The way he addresses the cue ball does change from shot to shot, but this has little to do with how much cue power he's about to use. When he's faced with a simple shot like this one, he's only down on the shot for the minimum time possible. The tougher the pot and the positional shot get, however, results in him addressing the cue ball for longer and longer. Notice he takes longer on this crucial green here where if he pots it it's virtually frame ball than he does on this difficult red where he's trying to screw the cue ball all the way back down the table. So really this has less to do with how difficult the shot is and more to do with how much he needs to pot the ball and how much he has to think about it. No matter the shot, before he strikes the cue ball on his backswing the cue always stops for a fraction of a second. But it's that tiny little pause that goes a long way into showing us how he's able to produce so much cue power. Because he leans into the table so much on his bridge hand and bridge foot, this gives the effect of his cue action being a bit like a coiled spring. 
The timing of the pause is then crucial because if it's too long or too short of a time, it won't create the same reaction. When Neil cues right up to the ball, his cue arm is in a position you might describe as just behind vertical. This is about as far back as you can hold the cue without running into other difficulties. If you look at Neil's elbow, it almost runs completely parallel with the cue. It does tuck into his body just a little bit, but this really won't matter. And despite the shot, Neil always pushes his cue hand all the way through to his body. Neil's ability to stay still on the shot is also incredibly important, but we never really talk about that in the right way. So we're going to have a look at more of that after we find... Michael, who's from Dundee in Scotland. But let's get back to looking at staying still on the shot. Keeping still on the shot is incredibly important, but it isn't possible in the way we usually think. When you're down on the shot, and your arm's moving back and forward and it pushes through incredibly fast. It can cause your entire body to jar or even rock from side to side, but this isn't really as much of a problem as people think. When it comes to staying still on the shot, there's only really three things you need to consider. Firstly, stay still in the initial position you get into. Don't change your mind about it. Secondly, you're most likely to move and not notice it when you're pulling your cue back to deliver it. So make sure as you're doing that, you keep your body completely still. And thirdly, you're probably going to shake around just a bit as you strike the cue ball. But you don't really want to try to stop that because that's probably going to make it worse. So just relax and play the shot. The more you're able to keep still like this, the less your body is going to wobble as you play the shot, and this is just going to allow you to strike closer to the edge of the cue ball without miscuing. As I'm going to play a shot with the rest here, I think it's a good time to mention rest play. Neil holds the cue with a rest between his first two fingers and his thumb. This is a little bit unusual, but other than this, he seems to have a pretty standard rest technique. I think Neil's rest play is probably incredibly competent compared with the top players we're measuring him against. So let's instead look at something that really does help with his fantastic cue action. Neil seems to have a soft but firm grip on the cue with his thumb and first finger. The other three fingers, however, are allowed to move a little bit more. This allows him to both keep the cue horizontal and push it forward faster with his fingers. You can see here that even though he's releasing the cue a little bit with his hand as he brings it back, as he strikes the cue ball, all the parts of his hand join on the cue evenly. This is difficult to get right, but it means when he's striking the cue ball, the back of his hand is gripping the cue evenly all the way round. So this is also one of the main keys to it, having a very soft grip before you strike the cue ball. And as you push your cue through the ball, tightening up more and more. And if you can do that gently and consistently, you'll get a huge reaction out of the cue ball. What I've also noticed, and I'm not even sure if I'm doing this properly, is he manages to keep his knuckles in a consistent position all the time, which is usually just above what you might describe as a three o'clock position. So the question is, now I've completely mirrored Neil's technique, will it actually help with my cue action? Well, let's find out. Seems pretty good. Even if I was copying Neil's technique perfectly, it'd be unlikely it would work just as well for me. But there were elements to his technique that if I practiced enough to the point I could do them consistently, I genuinely believe it would help my game. Certainly leaning into the table a little bit more to create that coiled spring effect and allow me to push my cue through further would genuinely help my cue power. Along with holding the cue in a way that's likely to make my cue action just a tiny bit smoother as I push it through. But for a minute it still feels weird and I did well to make this clearance. Yeah that was actually pretty good. Lapatuku Philippe is watching from Bucharest, Romania. Now I learned a lot from that. To start off with, all of our bodies are different, so completely copying somebody's technique isn't going to be a good idea. But the elements I did like that I want to incorporate into my own technique is leaning forward on the shot, you know, that coiled spring effect. Which is good because it means only altering my stance just a little bit and I think it could improve my game quite a lot. 
The other part of this technique that I think could help mine is when I play a shot, I tend to spread my fingers out like that and don't grip the whole cue at the same time as I deliver it. And that causes it to be a little bit wobbly at times. It still produces quite a lot of spin on the cue ball, but it is still a bit wobbly. So what I want to do is keep my fingers a little bit closer together and try and grab the whole cue at the same time. And I think that can really help me improve. But how much of a difference has this really made? If I set up the shot from the start again, how much better can I play it now? That's a little bit. It's definitely made a visible difference, so I can definitely say I learned something from this, and hopefully you learned something about your technique as well. And if you want to find out more about improving your game, have a look at these two videos, and remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel, and visit the website. See you later.